Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. I would just like to start off by saying happy International Women's Day to all of our panelists and all of our attendees. Um, good evening, good morning, or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Um, welcome to our second virtual open house of the year. Uh, we truly appreciate all of you guys for joining us. My name is Paula Woodard and I am an admissions associate here at Southwestern Academy and I will be your moderator for this special event. Um, during this event, we will briefly introduce the legacy that is Southwestern and highlight the unique possibilities and opportunities that are offered here. So without any further ado, here to start us off is our amazing director of admissions and financial aid, Ms. Elena Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Woodard, and welcome everybody. We're excited to have you join us and to meet our terrific panelists. A little about admissions. We are, there are four members in the admissions team and we're here to answer any questions you have and to walk you through the admissions process. We serve domestic, international, day and boarding students in grades six to 12 plus a postgraduate year. We are currently taking applications for our summer program and fall semester. We offer rolling admissions, so it's not too late to apply. We like to use the acronym OPEN to describe our school because students can take advantage of opportunities and possibilities through engaging and nurturing at Southwestern. Today, you're going to meet a variety of panelists that will capture the spirit of our school community and the support our faculty offers. You will meet our head of school, a few of our current students, a teacher, a parent of a current student, our college counselor, and an alumna. At the end of the presentation, there will be a Q&A session so please remember to indicate your questions in the Q&A box and our moderator, Mr. Woodard, will read them at that time. I would now like to introduce to you our head of school, Ms. Robin Jarko. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, a warm welcome to all of our viewers this evening. Thank you for taking time out of your schedules to be with us. Again, my name is Robin Jarko, and I am the new head of school here at Southwestern Academy. I'm very excited to have this opportunity to share our fantastic school with you. It's been my privilege to be a part of the Southwestern community for over 30 years. I've served in a variety of roles from an athletic coach to a classroom teacher to administrative dean. What draws me year after year to Southwestern Academy is quite simple. It really is our fantastic students and their supportive families. We, we are incredibly proud of our international student body and we enjoy celebrating our diversity. Each year we host students from between 10 and 20 different countries from around the world. In the next few minutes, you will get the opportunity to meet three of them, a student from China, one from Mexico and one from the United States. Southwestern Academy has 97 years of experience educating young men and women, preparing them for college, and really most importantly, preparing them for lives after schooling. Our program begins in middle school, grades six through eight, and our college prep curriculum is ninth through 12th grades. We also offer a postgraduate year and an ESL program, which you'll hear about from Mr. Kabalu. Our curriculum is based on the University of California's entrance requirements. And I'm pleased to share that over the past 12 years, our college admittance rate has exceeded 99%. And 90% of our graduates go into four-year universities. By the time our students graduate from Southwestern, they will have formed lifelong friendships while developing independence and confidence away from their parents. They'll have discovered and nurtured their unique strengths and talents through countless opportunities that might not exist if they were at a larger school. This comes in many forms, academics, sports participation, leadership roles, uh, and co and extracurricular activities. 
Many schools, including Southwestern, can boast about our small class sizes and a supportive nurturing faculty and staff. And our mission and vision is somewhat a little bit more unique. We attract and enroll high achieving students, as well as those who may have experienced unsuccessful schooling elsewhere. What really unites our students is their determination and their motivation, uh, their incredible empathy, and perhaps most importantly, their willingness to stretch the boundaries of their personal potential. The worldwide pandemic has certainly created challenges for education, but it has also proved or provided, excuse me, opportunities. I am proud of what we have accomplished at Southwestern over the past 11 months. In fact, never before has it been more important for us to be a student's home away from home. The social dynamics of living together and dining together and enjoying recreation together, these are the cornerstones of a boarding school environment. And Southwestern has successfully preserved that atmosphere through the entire duration of this pandemic. Of course, we have done all of this through diligent adherence to safety procedures and protocols. Since March, 2020, when schools were closing and sending students home, we continue to safely house over half of our students and many of them stayed through the end of the school year. Our summer classes were held with great success and in September, through testing and quarantine protocols, we safely welcomed back new and returning students into our resident student population. At this time, and because we are in LA County, we continue with distance learning. Yet we are distinctive in that we are accommodating our students with synchronous learning in their time zones, whether they are on campus or learning remotely in homes nearby or learning remotely in homes overseas. COVID-19 has certainly given us opportunities to reevaluate and reimagine many of our programs. There is no doubt the educational landscape is changing and I am confident as we look ahead and move forward. I invite all of those in attendance to be a part of Southwestern's shining future. Next, I'd like to introduce a short video that provides some insight into our many opportunities Southwestern has a media arts program that prepares weekly informative videos called Sunspots, and you can see those uh, from our website. There's a link there. This is an amalgamation of some of their work. So let's turn it back over to Paolo to show that video. Please enjoy.
hope you enjoyed that glimpse into Southwestern. Now, let me turn the program over to Paul Zeng. Paul is an 11th grader and in his second year here at Southwestern. He's been on campus since the pandemic began almost a year ago. Paul holds a 3.9 GPA and enjoys helping others by tutoring them in math. He is also a proctor and this year's student body vice president. Paul? Hello. Um, thank you, Ms. Darko, for that warm welcome. Um, so my name is Paul. I'm from China. And this is my second year here at Southwestern. Um, as the student body vice president, my job is to organize activities. We have sales weekly. We have dance nights, movie nights, um, outdoor camping. We even had a treasure hunt last semester. And in just two days, we're gonna organize a casino night here. And so there are lots of events that we get to organize and for students to enjoy. One of my major reasons to join our school is the diversity here. And my job title is student relations. Well, that does not just mean I have to deal with their teenager issues, but it also means that I need to show them how they can experience and learn about different languages and cultures, and more importantly, or on their preference, the food all around the world. And one of the major way we achieve that is we organize um, international dinners every month. And in fact, tomorrow would be our Pacific Rim dinner where we celebrate cultures around the Pacific Ocean. Now, surprisingly, I found a more personal way because of the pandemic. Although we do have a smaller number of students here, it's a precious opportunity for us to really get to know each other. I've made friends from Japan to Ukraine, from here in the United States to Mexico and Guatemala throughout this whole year at school. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Luis Escamilla, whom I still remember was the very first person I spoke to when I first got here and who has now become one of my, one of my closest friends during this special time. Luis. Thank you, Paul, and uh, hi, everyone. My name is Luis Escamilla. I'm from Guadalajara, Mexico. I'm 18 years old, and I'm a senior now. This is my third and last year here at Southwestern Academy. Um, these two years has been really an adventure for me uh, since day one. Uh, I would like to start talking about that. When I arrived, uh, it was a challenge for me uh, that I have to uh, accept, not only because I came here to study a new language, but also because I was living alone without my family, without, without even seeing my family for a whole uh, year. Uh, I was afraid that I will be alone, that no one will talk to me, but it wasn't the case. I felt that Everyone was really friendly. Uh, the teachers, they had the opportunity to get to know me and to get to, to know my family. Also the students here, they were really kind by uh, talking to me and making me part of the school. Uh, so that was really impressive. I'm a foreign student who lived here for his three years. And it felt just amazing how you can find really amazing people here from different cultures. Uh, every time that we have the chance, we go to our rooms and talk and we have really nice conversations. So I think it's a really interesting thing to think about it. Uh, another thing is that I started as a ESL student. It was really basically, I didn't know anything of English, just the basic things, but here they teach me a lot of things, how to express myself, how to write. And it was just really easy to me. And as my, as my last year here, I'm taking AP classes, which is something incredible as an in international student to be part of something that difficult. And because of that, I'm really happy to tell you that I've been applying to uh, universities here 
and I have been accepted uh, to some of those. Also, another thing is that Southwestern uh, have a lot of great things here as sports and activities. We have really interesting things to talk about. Uh, we have a lot of sports that we can play as baseball, basketball, volleyball. And even when it's our, the weekend, we have the chance to go to see a movie, to watch a game of the Lakers, to go to, to Six Flags. And it's just, as I imagine, as they show it in the movies, it's actually happening here. So it's really amazing. And finally, I would like to tell you that Southwestern has been my home for the last two years. And I didn't thought that I would feel like that. I get in love with this school. Every time that I wake up, I felt that energy that they transmit on the, in all their classes, in all the staff members. So I really hope that when, if I come back to say hi, I will be really nice to see you and that you can feel the same as I felt because Southwestern is a home that, uh, to me and it's a place where you belong. And now I would like to pass it to my, uh, one of my really nice friends, Catherine, who has been here for six years. And Catherine, it's your turn. Uh, thank you for the nice introduction, Luis. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Catherine. I've been at Southwestern for six years already, and I'm from San Francisco. Ever since I have entered Southwestern, I was being treated like super nicely by everyone, and I just felt really warm here. At first, I had some difficulty with like making friends because there wasn't so many people that were my same age when I came. And the school has been helping me out with like a lot of that and everything. It has really become my second home because like I've also stayed for a long time ever since the pandemic started. And I wanted to be here with all my friends and stuff. I have really, really beautiful memories that came from here and they will never fade. So um, <laughs> and yeah, so now I would like to introduce one of our students parent, Mrs. Smith. Hi, my name is Diane Smith. I am the parent of a senior here at Southwestern. And um, unlike the students you just heard from, my son is a day student, so he commutes, or he did when there was school in person. Um, he's been here for about six years, starting in the seventh grade. And he came from a very progressive elementary school. Students called their teachers by their first names. There were no grades and no real structure. So when my son started at Southwestern, he had a lot of catching up to do. And, um, I'm sorry that you can't really be here to take, take in the campus and get the full experience. But in addition to the beauty of the campus itself, I remember being so impressed with the students on campus. And quite frankly, I was a little nervous about how my son would do in such a rigorous academic environment. But as Ms. Jarko said, um, not only do they attract high achievers, they also attract kids who have not had that great success elsewhere, which was my son. So one of the benefits and one of the ways he succeeded um, here is just because of the small class size. Um, there's always access to teachers. There's a study hall every day and um, students are always, or teachers are always available to help out the students. And since most students are boarders and live on campus, there's always people around to help with your homework. And all of the, the teachers, know you, even if you don't have that particular class um, with a teacher, um, there's a lot of accountability. Um, as a parent, you might be worried about how your son or daughter will be doing when they're away from home. Um, but as you heard from some of the students, um, Southwestern is like home. And um, since my son was a day student, I was kind of thinking when he started that we'd have a lot of sleepovers and kids coming over to just to get away from school. But that never happened, which really is testament to how comfortable and at home kids feel at school. Um, 
as Luis mentioned, there are sports and it's all inclusive. If you know, you don't have to be the star player just to be able to get to play. Um, the school is wonderful. I can't say enough good things about it. You know, the, the value of a Southwestern education really is priceless. It's an investment in your son or daughter's lifelong success. I hope that our tour here kind of expresses how wonderful it is at Southwestern. And um, another great thing are the teachers. And it's now my pleasure to introduce to you one of the many great teachers, Mr. Kabalu. Thanks so much for that really nice welcome, Mrs. Smith. It's been a pleasure to know you for the last six years and uh, teaching, teaching Rye has also been really cool. Um, as a teacher, I have to be very um, blunt and say that your student, if they are from you know, a foreign country, uh, from, not from the US, they're gonna learn most of their English from their friends. They're gonna spend all their time with their friends. They're gonna learn other languages, but they're gonna learn English from watching Netflix and talking to their friends in English. And they're also going to learn it in class. And that's my primary uh, job here at Southwestern is to be a uh, ESL teacher. So the way it works uh, is different from it, the way it was when I first started, which was like all ESL all the time. But now it's um, you have your core classes, which you know your, your student will get math and a general science. Uh, you might be your student might be mixed with other students who are, who are also mainstream. Um, they will also get three classes of intensive English instruction. That is reading and um, that's one. The other one is writing and grammar combined in a class as well as conversation and vocabulary. One of the special things about Southwestern is that the teachers who teach that class will tailor it to your, your student, uh, try to specialize. For example, our head of English learning, Mr. Pulgencio, turns his conversation and vocabulary class into a US history course. I turn mine into an art course. We do art vocabulary, art history. We also make art. Uh, moving on, uh, we're gonna prepare your student for attending a, uh, a university here in the United States, teaching English for uh, students who are speaking a foreign language. They have to be adept in reading and writing and speaking and listening. And we believe here at Southwestern with everything that's combined from living here, working here, playing here and learning here, your student will do very well at that. Our next speaker, who is a veteran, he does a great job. He's the college counselor. His name is Jackson Hardage. Please take it away. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Cavalu, for uh, the wonderful introduction. Um, and also, thank you uh, for everything that you do for our students. I know they have a, a ton of respect for you. So it's, it's great you know, getting, getting to have you on here and getting to kind of, you know, talk about the day to day. Um, so good evening, everyone. Um, as just mentioned, I am Jackson Hardage. I'm the college counselor here at our uh, San Marino campus uh, for Southwestern Academy. I've held this position for the past couple of years now. Um, and one of the things I was really most impressed with when I walked onto campus here two years ago was just how the small, intimate, welcoming environment at Southwestern Academy really does a great job of preparing the students for living on a college campus, living amongst their peers, working amongst their peers, and also, we have the unique uh, benefit of having a, you know, a wonderful international student population that really does a great job of you know, promoting cultural inclusivity and community engagement. And these are things that I know the colleges love learning about our campus uh, in the applications. Um, and I think it's also something that the students and the families appreciate themselves as well. Uh, so in my time here, uh, you know, I've really enjoyed working with students in groups, individually, you know, whatever whatever is necessary. Um, and this could look like helping them with the college search process as early as you know, sophomore, junior year, uh, helping them just kind of get the general preparation process down, um, whether it's just understanding what to expect with admissions testing, uh, as Mr. Kabalu pointed out, TOEFL um, and things like that that might become relevant later on in the application cycle. And then of course, just supporting them throughout uh, senior year when the applications are up and running and, you know, everything's going. So it's pretty exciting. Um, and again, another benefit of having a small intimate, uh, campus is just that I get a chance to build really good, meaningful relationships with these students. And that helps me understand really what they want out of college, but also life beyond. Um, and just kind of helping them, you know, see the bigger picture of where they might be, you know, five, 10 years down the road. 
Um, so that's just been a, that's been a real big benefit uh, to being on this campus. Um, and just to give some examples of some recent acceptances, we've actually already started getting some, as uh, Louise pointed out. Um, he's gotten into a few already, so it's pretty exciting. Uh, we've had students that have been accepted to, you know, Cal the Cal State Universities and the University of College California schools that are all over our state. Those are starting to come in uh, a little bit earlier, which is nice. And then we also have students who've been admitted to various uh, public and private schools all over the country. Um, and they normally apply to these schools through Common Application, also called Common App, and Coalition. And also, you know, I take time to make sure the students are familiar and comfortable using these uh, various platforms. Um, so it's pretty exciting just to see where everyone goes. Uh, you know, they all kind of blaze their own trail uh, in their own way. Uh, but just to give you a few more examples, um, we've had some students go to Boston at uh, Northeastern University. We have some students in New York City uh, at NYU. Uh, we have some students in Chicago. Uh, we've had some students go international. Uh, so again, it's just really neat to see uh, kind of where everyone starts their you know, new chapters of life. Um, another unique experience that I've had is getting to work with our international po uh, student population and just kind of getting them ready for the unique requirements that they're going to face in their application. Because um, things change rapidly, especially with the, the onset of the pandemic. Um, things seem to be changing kind of weekly. So it's just this constant communication and constant updating has been really, really critical. Um, and that's just kind of what we're dealing with right now. Uh, but also with these constant communications, um, I feel I'm able to kind of explain the process and kind of demystify the admissions process. So everything just kind of makes sense. Um, and, uh, you know, they understand why admissions officers are asking for certain things and, you know, things of that nature. So overall, really just looking to support the students throughout the entire process from preparation and searching all the way through their applications. Um, and again, I, I've really enjoyed building these, you know, these great working relationships with these students. I've really gotten to know them really well. Um, and it's been really cool to see uh, them start these new exciting chapters of their lives. Uh, so that's it for me. Um, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And now I'm going to pass it off to uh, one of our esteemed alumni, uh, Ms. Daisy Barrios. Thank you, Mr. Hardish, for that lovely introduction. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Daisy Barrios. I am not only a Southwestern graduate, class of 2013, but I am also an admissions associate. So as you can tell my background, I am in the office right now. So if you decide to apply, you might get lucky and I might get your file. Um, so anyways, yes, I am an alumni of Southwestern. I attended for my four years of high school. I actually came from a very large public middle school, just a couple minutes down the road, actually. I was not very happy at all. I was not a part of any clubs. I was not a part of any sports. I had the same group of, of four friends that I basically saw every day during the school week. Um, so when the opportunity to come visit Southwestern arose, I said, what the hey, you know, it was stepping out of my comfort zone to come and tour a, a private school. Kind of like Ms. Smith said earlier, once you step onto the campus, it's a whole different world. I absolutely loved just the whole area. Um, San Marino is a beautiful city. It was completely different to what I was accustomed to. So I, went ahead and I applied. I decided to come for all four years and I absolutely loved it. I was also a day student. So um, I was lucky enough to be able to participate in all of the clubs and all of the sports and all of the activities that the school offers. Um, even though I wasn't a boarding student, I was here way past the end of the school day. You know, sometimes I would stay for um, our international dinners that are open to all of our boarding and day students to come and celebrate and enjoy. I was going on camping trips. I was going on hikes. Um, I was president of our environmental club. So these were all things that I definitely was not able to do when I was in a larger school setting. Um, I was able to meet so many people from all over the world, people that I'm still very close friends with. So if I ever decide to go visit Japan or Thailand or go to Switzerland, you know, I have free room and lodge <laughs> with great friends that I've made here at Southwestern. So I definitely encourage you to come and visit us when 
um, some travel restrictions are lifted and it's a little bit safer to do so, we would love to show you around. And I would love to potentially welcome you to our Southwestern alumni family. I think you would be very, very happy. Um, your students would definitely find a place where they feel very comfortable. All the teachers are great. Um, it's been it's been a very interesting experience to go from being a student to being a colleague with some of my teachers because they've been here for many, many years. And you can definitely tell that they absolutely love their job. And I love being part of the process on both ends, I guess. Now, I, as an alumni and as an admissions associate, I get to see the benefits from, from both sides of the spectrum. So um, yeah. If you have any questions, I would be more than happy to answer anything, even if you don't put it down in the Q&A section, please reach out to us. We are here to help on with every step of the way, really. Um, and of course, if you have any questions as a student, I, I am here to answer those as well. So um, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to Ms. Jarko, who was actually um, one of our deans when I was a student here. So now she is our head of school, which is, it's been a very, very great transition. So we're very, very happy. I'm glad to still be here while she's here. So I'm going to pass it back to Ms. Jarko. Very good. Thank you, Daisy. Uh, and thank you to all of our panelists this evening and to our guests. Thank you for joining us. I hope you can understand why every your students, everyone belongs here at Southwestern Academy. I urge you to learn more about us. Um, talk, call, talk with our admiss admissions associates, uh, visit campus as Ms. Mrs. Smith said. Uh, we have two beautiful campuses. Our main campus is here in San Marino in a very exclusive and safe community. It's just south of Pasadena in Southern California. And our satellite campus is in Rimrock, Arizona which is near the incredibly stunning community of Sedona. So again, uh, come join us, come see us, uh, ask questions. Please reach out uh, to me directly. I'd love to get to know you better and share more about our school. At this time, I will turn it over to our moderator, Mr. Woodard, uh, and we welcome your questions. Thank you so much, Mrs. Jarko. As Daisy said, um, Mrs. Jarko has taken over as uh, head of school this year, and we are extremely excited and so proud so far. So thank you so much. Um, I want to thank all of our panelists, as always, for helping out and joining us. And so we want to answer questions from you guys. So let's see what we have in our Q&A box. Again, if you have any questions or thoughts or comments, please go ahead and put them in the Q&A box and I will try to address some of them right now. Um, I do have a question from a Ralph Park. My kid is currently in town for spring break. Can we make a short visit to campus? Yes, please. Yes, please. Um, our contact information will be in the last slide. Um, go ahead and contact admissions and we will love to schedule something for you guys as soon as possible. So yes, yeah, please come on by. Um, I have another question. Can I ask your students, what is your dream university? How does your school help you in achieving your dream school? Um, I will hand that one to Luis. He mentioned that he was accepted to some universities, so. Yeah. Um, so my dream school is uh, staying here uh, first at California. I would like to get accepted to UC Irvine. Um, I apply uh, to other universities and the way the school helped me was by our counselor first at all, that since we were senior, uh, juniors, he decided to make meetings with us and give us things to, to get more to, to know more about the schools that we may apply. It was just a uh, great help to actually have a person who gave, gave us his time, not only in the week, but also in the weekends uh, to meet with us and to clarify our, our doubts. I think that's really important. And because as an international student, it, it was just difficult to know what is the common app or how can I apply to different schools? So, uh, by part, by that part, I think it's really uh, important for me. Uh, I think Mr. Hardash made a great job 
and even now uh, that we even have doubts or finally that we get accepted and we don't know what to do, he will be there uh, asking, uh, ask, asking. And I think it's really impressive. Also to Mr. Cavallo, he also gave him his time by checking our essays. Uh, even he didn't, again, even in the weekends, if it was at 8, 8 p.m., he will be like, yeah, let's do it, dude. Let's, let's read it. And honestly, every time that we read it, he got too emotional that at some point I ma uh, he made me cry because all the things that he said. And again, you, you, you will not find anything like that in other school. I think that's how Western will make that really clear that if you had a dream, they will be there for you in order to achieve it. So I think that's one of the really interesting things that the school has. Thank you, Luis. Good answer to the question. Um, our next question is from Ileana Escobar. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, these two are pretty much for Mrs. Charco, so I can I'll answer them one at a or ask them one at a time. Um, the first question is: Is the junior high curriculum a uh, Common Core? If not, what is the curriculum? That is the first. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so yes, our junior high curriculum is Common Core. It, it's based on the California Common Core. Uh, actually, it, it probably exceeds that, but we do at the junior high level uh, have the objective of preparing them for college level work. So whatever the students' uh, personal needs are, we do personalize it quite a bit at the junior high level. Uh, again, the goal is to not necessarily meet state standards. Of course, we, we do and we exceed them again, but it's to uh, prepare that student for the college, or sorry, for high school and college. Okay. And then the second question she had is, what is the average ed education level of the teachers and what is the turnover rate of teachers? Very good questions. Uh, so it kind of is spread out across the board. Uh, we have a number of teachers with uh, simply four-year degrees, uh, many with master's degrees, and some with credentials as well. So it's equally spread out between uh, those three areas. Um, the turnover rate, teachers love it here. <laughs> uh, in fact, our longest tenured teachers have now been here uh, for... 30 plus years and our newest teachers actually have now been here for about five years. So um, again, teachers, everybody feels especially uh, comfortable here, whether that's a student or whether that's a teacher. Uh, it's a, such a welcoming and friendly and inviting environment that, that yes, the teachers do stay. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Darko. Um, the next question might also be for you. I'm kind of picking on you. Um, what type of music program do you have? This is from Michael. Our music program uh, varies. Uh, we have instrumental, uh, music history, uh, choir. Um, there's a variety of music classes that meet the VPA or the Visual Performing Arts requirement, uh, which is a one year uh, course. And it varies, like I said, from instrumental all the way to singing and choir. Thank you, thank you. Um, I will pick on one of the kids now, one of our students. Um, we'll give this to Catherine. What is your food like on campus? Um, our school has a great variety of food. Like we have Chinese, Italian, Mexican, and like all kinds of food. And we have also a lot of choices for breakfast. There would be like eggs, sausages, rice, um, pancakes, blintzes, and many, many things. Yeah, and it's just quite enjoyable, yeah. 
Thank you so much. Um, this question is for Mrs. Smith. Um, probably the second to last question. Um, how many schools did you tour and what made Southwestern stand out compared to other schools? Kind of touched on that, so. Hello. Um, we toured, can you hear me? Yes, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Uh, we toured a number of schools. I can't honestly remember, maybe a half a dozen or more. Um, what really stood out at Southwestern is um, how they were gonna sort of tailor the program to my son. Uh, a lot of the schools in the area, a lot of the private schools in the area um, attract very high achievers as does Southwestern, but um, there's no way my son could have gone to one of those schools. And if he had stayed at a more progressive school, it would have just been more of the same. So um, it, was, it was a hands down. It was like, it was the only place after touring that we wanted to go. And it's been great. It has been great. My son, who is a senior, has already been accepted at eight universities and um, waitlisted at a couple more. So um, we're happy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. Um, kind of from Mrs. Charco, um, Mrs. Lopez can also chime in and one of the students also, but um, Kathleen is asking, what is the present situation of the pandemic um, for the borders? Um, as if she wanted to have our students, one of her students join the school, what would be um, kind of the uh, protocols? Um, I'm sorry, the, so the question is, what are the, 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 the borders, the international borders? Yes, or uh, any of the borders probably, just the present situation of the pandemic for our border, boarding students. Okay, so, um... Currently on campus, we are remote teaching. Uh, our students that are on campus are uh, learning from their dorm rooms at this time. Um, my interpretation of that question also is asking about the borders of the country and getting in, perhaps. And uh, one of our, uh, our, our students might wanna talk about that um, obviously, embassies across around the world are, are closed at this time, so it's it's a little more challenging. Uh, but I'll have Ms. Lopez talk about the I twenty process, and once that happens, then getting in and out of the country does not appear to be a problem. Ms. Lopez, do you want to talk about the I twenty process? I sure do. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So uh, the I-20 process, so when a student enrolls, uh, they enroll by signing an enrollment contract and paying half of the tuition. At that time, we will go ahead and issue an I-20, uh, form I-20 for the student. We send that I-20 a packet, which includes a letter of support and some other materials material to help the student prepare for their visa appointment. They then make their appointment uh, with the U.S. Embassy or the consulate in their country and um, they go for their appointment and they uh, get their F1 visa, their student visa. And that's when at that point they notify us that they received their visa, they send us a copy of it, and then they pay the remaining tuition amount. Um, prior to uh, starting school. So uh, we support them as much as we can. For example, if they do not pass their uh, uh, interview, they, they can try a few times. But um, if they don't, we will refund them the tuition paid um, when they sign the contract. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Jarko and Ms. Lopez. Um, Ms. Lopez, I'm going to steal you for one more question. This is going to be our last question for the night. Um, what is are uh, the three highest countries? Uh, I'll reword this a little. Um, out of uh, all of our international students, what uh, are the three most popular countries that our students are coming from? Uh, this current year. Um the international students are coming from, from China, 
from Mexico, we do have a, a good, um, there you go, see Luis? Uh, Luis is raising his hand, you can't see him. And um, the, I think Vietnam would be the third one, or yes. So, but we do have domestic students um, on campus remotely, but also in our board, in our dorms. Thank you so much, Ms. Lopez. All right. I don't see any more questions. I think we actually tackled all the questions. So I just want to thank everybody again for joining our presentation. It means so much to all of us to have you guys here. Um, again, this recording will be sent out to everyone who registered um, and attended. Um, please contact admissions um, if you have any questions, comments, or thoughts. And again, if you are in the area, we are open for campus tours. So please reach out to us and we will schedule a tour for you as soon as possible. Um, we would like you to follow us on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Yuku um, for weekly updates, events, and videos. So thank you again, and we hope to see you all soon.